Hey teachers, it's me, Father Scott, your pastor. I hope the beginning of the school year is going really, really well for you. I just want you to know how proud I am of you for all that you've done for our kids and how grateful I am for the time that you have put into making this year start so well. It's a crazy time and you all have stepped up to the plate and knocked it out of the park. And I know you're gonna to continue to do so. So again, I'm thankful and just very, very proud of you. I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about mass with you. Because as I'm sure you know, we're not gonna be able to take all the kids over to the church for an all-school mass. Even if we didn't have anybody else there, there's no way that we could spread the kids out and have enough space to get them all over there. So for most people, except for one or two cohorts for each Mass. For most classes, you're going to be in your classroom for Mass, watching Mass live streamed and praying it in your classroom. Now, for those of you who have been watching Mass online for a while, you know the challenge of trying to make a space sort of a, a temporary chapel, making a space ready for a prayerful experience even when it's not the same as being at church. So you get that. You probably get that better than I do because admittedly, I feel kind of bad about this, like since day one of the pandemic and the shutdown, I've been able to still say mass in the Adoration Chapel or in the church. I've been totally blessed. So you probably know even better than I do how to make a space holy for a live stream mass. But I thought that I'd just give you a few suggestions anyway. Let's talk about the space, your classroom itself. Now I'm here on the third and fourth grade hallway and I was gonna go into a classroom to do this video, but I know that you've got everything exactly where you want it to be and I don't want to mess any of that up. So instead, I'm outside here in the hallway, and I chose this hallway because if I was to take a reading test, that's probably about the level that I'd end up at, third or fourth grade. But anyway, in your classroom, I'm sure all of your kids are probably already going to be facing towards the screen where the live stream will happen. My suggestion is as best you can to make the space around the screen as uncluttered as possible, have as few distractions as possible. And if, it's, if it is possible, maybe to add some images like of saints, of Mary, of Jesus. You know, the, the cathedrals and churches of the world, they have those images not just so that they can be fancy, but so that when our hearts and our minds start to wander during Mass, we have something holy to look at and bring us back to where we're supposed to be, back to where we're supposed to focus. And so in any way that you can make that visual field more holy for them, you're gonna help them to stay focused. Now, in terms of the space itself, their desks, obviously, and I know you've already thought of this, but make sure there's nothing's on the desk, nothing that they can be fidgeting with or get distracted by, unless they need something to fidget with. And for yourself, I suggest maybe not sitting at your desk because there's so many distractions that might be there. Maybe I can take a little, little look at this lesson plan or maybe grade one or two things or even just look at my phone. All those distractions are gonna be there. I'd suggest even for you that you try to remove yourself from that because if they look over and you're distracted, it's not gonna help them to stay focused themselves. Now before Mass even starts, I'd encourage you to kind of slow things down for them, maybe for five or 10 minutes to get their hearts ready to really prayerfully enter into Mass. And that's not like extra time. Think about it. When we had all school Mass in the church, you'd have to take that time to line them up, to walk them over there, to get them kneeling and ready. So it's not like really extra time. It's time that you would have already taken. But this time, this way, you can actually use that time to focus them. You can do that in whatever way you want. But here's my suggestion. I'd encourage you to encourage the students to bring salt to Mass. No, I'm not going to ask them to melt any ice 
SALT, it's an acronym, S-A-L-T. There are four points in the Mass, at least four points, where we are encouraged to add something, to give of ourselves to the time of worship. At the very beginning, we are instructed during the penitential rite to think about our sins, to place our sins before the Lord so that He can forgive them, and then our hearts are even better ready to praise Him during Mass. But the truth is, that's usually a short window of time there at the beginning of Mass, and it's hard to think of your sins before the priest goes into the confidior or talks about, um, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. But if we come already knowing the sins we want forgiven, it's a more fruitful time. So before Mass even starts, encourage them to think of S, their sins. Now after the readings and the homily, we have our petitions, right? What we want to ask for, A. So encourage them to have some sort of intention that they bring to Mass. Maybe for themselves, maybe for their loved ones, maybe for a classmate, maybe for something they heard of on the news. Have something that they will ask God to take care of at that Mass. Then, when we're preparing the altar, usually we bring up the gifts. That's when we're not in the midst of a pandemic, right? Well, those gifts represent us. They represent our, our offerings, our financial offerings, but more importantly, they represent the offerings of our lives. How it is that we have loved God and our neighbor and want to place that on the altar with the bread and wine and then allow Jesus to transform it. So have them think of some way that they have loved or sacrificed since the last time they went to Mass. So that when I'm preparing the altar or Father Joel is preparing the altar, they can prepare the altar of their hearts by placing that love on the altar. And then T, Thanksgiving. As I'm sure you know, Eucharist means Thanksgiving. So have them think of the things that they want to be grateful for when we get to that point, after we've received communion, to give thanks to God. So I'd encourage you to have them bring salt to Mass and give them a little bit of time before Mass to think about that stuff so that when those times come, they've got something to add. And it's just going to add more flavor to their experience of Mass. Now, during Mass, again, continue to keep the distractions to a minimum. Um, encourage them to respond to all the prayers by responding yourself, right? And um, for the little ones, maybe it might be helpful to have some of those responses written up so that if they can read, they can, can read those and respond along. Remember, a lot of these kids haven't been to Mass in five or six months. So some of them might be a little rusty, understandably. So any way that we can help them to engage Mass better would be good. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, we're not doing an, a sign of peace, no exchange of peace. We don't even encourage people to do that. So don't be caught off guard and remind your kids that even though they may want to, they can't go around and give elbow bumps or whatever is appropriate these days. We're just going to Keep moving through that. Now, let's talk about communion. Um, when we're in the church itself, communion happens at its normal time. But now we actually bring communion to people. We don't line them up. We don't file them past each other and all of that. We just bring communion to where they are. I think that's maybe the safest way to do it. We're going to do the same thing for your kids. We're not going to have them come into the hallway and line up or anything like that or process somewhere. We're going to stay where they are. And then your fellow teachers who are trained Eucharistic ministers will help me or Father Joel or Monsignor to bring communion to all the classrooms. So we'll have one Eucharistic minister for each different hallway. And they'll bring communion to your room. So they'll come into the room. And, and what I'd encourage you to do is um, when you are waiting for the Eucharistic minister to come to your classroom, to go around and give all the kids some hand sanitizer, okay? So that if there's any incidental contact, our hands will be clean. 
And I think it might be important for me to note, we're going to be doing this after the closing blessing, okay? So instead of doing it at the regular time, it would probably take too long and they'd end up missing the prayer after communion and the final blessing. We're going to do it after Mass is over. So when the Eucharist gets to the room, have them all stand with their sanitized hands. And the teacher will come to them and say, the body of Christ. And with their mask on, they're going to say, amen. They're going to have their hands out. And the teacher's going to bring the Eucharist and sort of gently drop it from above, okay? Once it's on the hand. So there's no incidental contact between hands. But just in case there is, they're going to have a Clorox wipe with them, those teachers, so that they can sanitize their hand before they get to the next person. The kid will say amen with the mask on, take the mask off, receive, and then put the mask right back on. And then when the Eucharist leaves the room, they can all be seated. And again, this is happening after Mass is over. And so I would encourage you to give them some time at that point to prayerfully thank God for the gift of the Eucharist. And there are tons of different ways you can do that, from basic silence to walking them through a prayer of thanksgiving, to whatever. Me personally, when I am finished receiving communion, when I have time, I like to do what I call the altars prayer. Another acronym. A, uh, I adore you. L, I love you. T, I thank you. I'll say what it is I'm thankful for. A, I ask you. R, I repent to you. And S, I need the strength from you. Use something like that to, take that to make that time after they've received Jesus' body and blood, soul, and divinity into their bodies to make that time as beautiful and as holy as possible. Now, one thing to note. Here at St. Joseph, during the summer, we started saying the St. Michael the Archangel prayer after Mass. Right after the final blessing, we say that, and then we process off. And so, um, I'm going to try my best to remember to send you the version of the St. Michael the Archangel prayer that we use that you could maybe print off and have for the kids to read so that they can follow along when we pray that at the end of the Mass. I think that's all I want to tell you about um, how we're going to celebrate Mass here at St. Joseph. Again, we're going to maybe take one or two cohorts and actually put them in the church. We'll block off their portion so that no one else is sitting there or gets around them, and they'll all be spaced out. But for everybody else, we're going to be in our classroom. But we want to make that as holy and joyful and, and reverent as possible. So thank you for doing that in the midst of all the other things that we're asking you to do to make this crazy year still a good year for our kids. If you have any questions or, or, or want other suggestions, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me. But I just want to again express my gratitude and express how proud I am for making St. Joe the awesome school that it is, even in this year of the pandemic. God bless teachers.